Hey everybody, welcome back. Sam, Gentleman's Life. I want to make a quick video, and this is kind of a response to a video Stuart uh, Lomas just did, uh, because it had me thinking, and I've thought about this before, actually, um, and that's that, you know, sometimes it, you feel like it's kind of be cool to go uh, a little bit off the beaten path, or just kind of do your own thing. And I was thinking of that in relation to the the uh, the Rolex GMT Master BLNR uh, that I would like to own someday. Now I still want to own it uh, someday, uh, regardless of my thoughts in this video. But there is a watch that costs about the same amount from a small boutique brand that I'm really intrigued by, um, and has a different function you don't see, you don't see people have as often. It's a really small boutique brand. You can customize the watch, so like. I could create one with the materials and colors that I want to have on it. Um, and that's really cool. So I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to show you the watch. It's uh, essentially they t the company takes the base, a base ETA movement and then does tons of different kind of modifications and things to create cool designs and cool f um, complications. So um, yeah, we're going to switch it around and I'll show you the watch. So here we are everybody. Now this is uh, the company right here, Oshus und Junior from Lucerne, Switzerland. And this is the base model of the one I'm looking at. So this is their annual calendar watch. So you can see you have the time around the outside. And then you also have uh, date of the month. And then you have here day of the week. And just above the center you have um, the month of the year. So you, this tells you what month it is, this tells you what day of the week it is, this tells you the actual date of the month, and you have your time. And uh, that is for, uh, as most of you probably know, an annual calendar uh, complication. And I just really like the way this one was designed. Um, really cool and different look. So for me, I would probably do something along the lines of like a titanium case in 39 millimeter with... Um, probably like a dark gray, slate gray kind of dial, maybe black hour markers, and then I'd probably do like black maybe hour and minute hand, but with a like a red second hand and a red dot for each of the indicators. So I think that would maybe just give it a little bit of pop. So that's probably the kind of thing I would do um, if I was creating a custom version for myself. So all gray, black, and and with just slight red, red accents. Um, but going down, you can see it is the annual calendar with the date, date, month, weekday, and then uh, also the time. Um, and they only make about 50 of the annual calendar watches each year. Um, and the annual calendar complication they created uses extra five gears on top of the normal ETA movement to create that function. Um, and for those of you who don't know, an annual calendar has to be changed, the date has to be changed one time per year, and that's the last day of February. Uh, going into March 1st. So, um, this is something I would consider buying maybe before buying the Rolex GMT Master, considering they both have the same price. Um, this just, the design, the function, and everything about it really intrigues me. And if I wanted to go off the beaten path and wait to get myself a Rolex GMT Master, then I would probably buy this in place of it first and then get the GMT Master later. Uh, just because this watch really, there's something about it that really intrigues me, and I can't exactly put my finger on it, but it's just the annual calendar complication along with the design, and um, also knowing you can create one that's, there may be no one in the world that has the same, you know, color scheme customization that you create for yourself, and they're only making 50 a year total regardless of customization, um, is really intriguing to me as well. It's just a really cool looking watch. Let's see if we can look at the gallery here see some of the different annual calendars they've created. So this one has like that kind of, kind of black with the silver and then the dark slate gray for the uh, markers. But really neat looking watch. I'm making it 42 and 39. Here's one, looks like they've got gold um, or brass for the hour markers and hour hands with the black. So that's a really cool looking one too. Looks really neat. Here's the one they were showing, the titanium case. 
the the finishing also on the on that dial surface is really nice there. Such a beautiful, beautiful looking watch. Just something you never see very often. Here's a really interesting looking one. Not that's not my cup of tea, but uh, I can appreciate that for sure. Really nice. Let's see what else we got here. This one's got the kind of brass dial, and then the gray and black um, for the accents. So that looks a little bit dressier, I think. Looks really nice though. This one's similar to how I might do it, um, except for instead of black with white accents, I'd probably do dark gray with black accents. Um, and then I'd probably make the second hand and the dial, like the complication indicators, all the same color. Uh, for me, probably red, but this is kind of getting closer to the kind of thing I might do. Also, I think that looks really nice. I think those are white loom. Yeah, that's super luminova. So I probably wouldn't do that. I'd probably do a lighter dial and then the black our markers. And then here's a kind of out there one. They went for all sorts of bright colors. So you can see how even though they only make 50 of this this model per year, um, the variation and customization is available is really, really cool. Um, so who knows, maybe, you know, um, if I go to grad school and graduate from grad school or when I turn 40, maybe I get this and then wait to get a Rolex later in life. Um, because this is something really different and off the beaten path, which is also really fun to do sometimes. So um, that, that was just, all of that is kind of a ramble of what came to me and my thoughts um, from uh, Stuart's video. And it's the one watch right now that I would probably consider getting um, instead of the Rolex GMT Master. Um, although I still intend to own a Rolex GMT Master. It's the one Rolex I really, really want to own. But I just thought I'd show you guys something a little bit different and really probably unknown to a lot of people. Really sp small boutique brand um, with a model that I really liked. And if I was going off the beaten path, that's what I would do. So I hope you all enjoyed the video um, and my look at kind of how I would go off the beaten path and what intrigues me. It's also Design-wise, that's very different from anything I own, which is probably part of the reason it draws me in is it's something that's uh, quite a variation on everything I have already. I have a lot more either sport models or classical looking pieces. So that would be really neat to me. Uh, what would you guys do if you went off the beaten path? If you, um, you know, if you were looking for an Omega Seamaster or a Speedmaster or a Rolex or a Breitling and you decided you could go off the beaten path for the same amount of money, what would you look at buying? I'd love to hear your guys' answers in the comments below. If you have any other questions or any videos you'd like to request, um, leave those in the comments below too, or send me an email at a gentleman life a gentleman's life show at gmail.com. Until next time.